So, so this is the question. It's uh, asking us to consider the second order interference maximum. Okay, so I, let me write down some of the um, uh, formulas that you have seen in your reading of these sections. So we are looking for interference maximum. So we are looking for constructive interference, which means this condition applies that the D being the double slit separation distance times the sine of the angle um, is equal to M times lambda. This is for constructive interference. And M is um, integer values plus minus. Actually, I think for uh, double slit interference, it starts from zero because the central maximum you can count as one of them. So zero plus minus one plus minus two and so on. And um, the because I hate to write down just an unexplained formula, this is the geometric setup that uh, I hope you are thinking of each time you see that expression that um, this is the separation between the two slits. And um, if we are looking at a light that's uh, arriving at some screen, some distance away, then it's this angle theta that the 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 expression is referring to. So it says consider second order. So it, uh, it second order, I think it means um, m equals two because m equals zero, that's just right at the center. So I don't think it counts as an order at all. And um, when you look at the intensity pattern here, it should be minimum and then maximum, minimum, maximum. Um, so this would be m equals one, and this would be m equals two. So um, so we have so far we fixed the one value in this expression here that may be produced by Young's double slit experiment. The first part is asking what is the smallest separation between two slits that will produce a second order maximum for any visible light. Okay. Um, so if uh, this question is giving you some pause, um, guess uh, this is what I want you to think of. I think it's referring to a situation that is relatively rare, especially for double solid interference. But um, this is something that you can actually see when you when we deal with the diffraction grading that you will see next week or actually the week after next week, we'll talk about diffraction grading and that this is actually a scenario that could happen. Yeah, you could have a um, separation between the slits that's just so small that um, the only interference um, maxima you see are the, the, the central maximum, the first order, and then if the separation is small enough that you wouldn't see second order at all. Um, so what you have to imagine is, imagine having this pattern here and um, you can kind of imagine this a pattern changing as you uh, change the separation here as a parameter and as you make this narrower. Uh, what should happen here is that you can kind of guess from this expression here that um, as D gets smaller for the same given M and Lambda, what should happen is that the position of the interference maximum be, uh, happens at a, a larger angle. So what you should expect to see this interference pattern with that you would expect to get this to get wider. So, um, so if uh, at some particular separation, if uh, uh, theta was originally, I don't know, 10 at, at the angle of, of uh, five degrees, then as this gets uh, uh, half as small, uh, maybe theta will increase to 10 degrees. And as this uh, gets smaller, theta will continue to increase. And in thinking through this is where you can notice uh, limit to that <laughs> increase. The largest value that the interference, well, largest angle, any outgoing angle theta can be is 90 degrees. It can't be larger than 90 degrees and or you know between minus 90 degrees and 90 degrees. And, and you can see that expressed here. So, um, so expressing it in terms of the sine of the angle here, 
the maximum value or the range of value that sine of theta can take on is between minus one and one. And it's a considering that, that'll give you a limit on what value the separation between the slits can take on. So, um, so let me just rewrite this equation with the simplification in mind. I'm saying, all right, uh, then let me just consider the extreme case where sine of theta is equal to one. In that extreme case, I have d times sine, or sorry, not sine of theta, and to write down one, d times one is equal to m lambda, and I have the value of m, that's two. And oh, and what I still need is lambda for wavelength. So what the question is saying is uh, for any visible light. So you have to think through, okay, do I want a short wavelength or long wavelength? And since I'm looking for the smallest separation, um, I think I want lambda to be small because um, if if uh, one, if I find the d uh, for a long wavelength like red light, then um, the lambda, the d for the d for the shorter wavelength like a blue light will be um, smaller. So so I, I will take the smaller of the two. So so I want this d to be um, small. And um, and when you look at the hint, that's where the hint will tell you what the range is for the visible light. The You can take it as given that the wavelengths between 400 nanometers to 700 nanometer is the visible range. So I'm taking this number as my wavelength as 400 nanometer as being the lambda that I'll plug in. So since I want my final answer in microns, I will just, uh, um, use, uh, so I'll just use lambda equals, this in microns is a 0 0.4 micron. So the smallest separation here should be, um, you know, solve this for D. D is equal to the, the order two times the wavelength, 0 0.4 micron um, divided by, well, one. Um, so, so yeah, that should be the answer. I guess I can just plug in. Uh, <laughs> did I just give the answer? I think I did, uh, 0 0.8 micron. Uh, so, yeah. <laughs> um, okay, so the second question asks, uh, what is the smallest separation between two slits that will produce a second order maximum for all visible light? Oh, um, yeah, I guess here it's a matter of, sorry, this is more of a reading question and um, reading question than physics question because what you're asked to discern is the difference between the meaning of for any visible light versus the meaning of the for all visible light. And I think if you take this separation here, what we'll find is that for red light, uh, you wouldn't see the second order maximum because it's a pass to the angle where it would have been able to produce that second order maximum. Um, so, that, so with this condition, you want the, um, in this expression, you know, d times one, the maximum value sine theta can be is equal to two, the order times the wavelength. This time I want the wavelength to be the, it, I want that to be large so that it captures the most uh, vulnerable of the wavelength of, that will start to have disappearing a uh, second order maximum. So, so here I take the, the longest end of the visible uh, range, 700 nanometers. That would be the deep red just uh, below the infrared. And uh, here the answer should be, basically the same thing. So once you figure out what it's asking for, then it's uh, relatively simple. It harder part is figuring out what it's asking for. And uh, really the figuring out uh, this condition here, because the question doesn't tell you that, just a straightforward way. It's 
relying on to on you to figure out the limiting condition. So let me just plug that in to verify that that's an answer. I don't usually plug in answers, but um, this is kind of simple. So 